Article 20. Move that the town to amend the code of Hadley, uh, the code of the town of Hadley, to adopt a line of sight bylaw as delineated in Article 20 of the warrant of the special town meeting held October 24, 2013, and incorporated by reference herein. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Motion and seconded. Selectman Dukevitz. Mr. Neihart. Thank you. In the past, every once in a while, we'll go and we'll get a complaint about something in the way of people seeing up and down the road, be it from a corner or through a driveway or something like that. And it was pretty, luckily, we've been very uh, fortunate that either Mike Klamoski or myself or, or the uh, chief of uh, police have gone out and told people, hey, can you trim this back because people can't see so there's no um, safety issue. That's worked for quite a long time, up until this past summer. Uh, we had one is issue whereby the letter went out from the police chief and saying, hey, uh, can you remove a portion of the fence? Uh, we have determined that it's a line of sight issue. Well, the person came back and said with their lawyer, What's the bylaw? What's the regulation that allows you to tell us to remove the fence? Well, we didn't really have one. So through, throughout this, we, um, we did pull a bylaw from another town out, and luckily we had the planning board go through it, and they, they had some good questions out of it. And this has now morphed into this. The one section that I've been asked, what is this Mass General Law Chapter 87, Section 3 is about? That has to do with town-owned trees. And that's all under a very specific guideline and how they, how you have to have a town meeting or a meeting with the select board to get those trees trimmed back. This has to do with all those overgrown things that we've all seen around town that the shrubs have just grown over into the town uh, byways. Um, yes, there's a lot of discussion on what well, is it going to be my tree that I have to move. The real question is, can we see up and down the road? It will be a mutual decision by the police chief and myself or the DPW director, myself, or all three of us. It's not going to be just because you have something right there now that we're going to require it to be moved. It, if you can't get out of your driveway, then nobody else can get out of your driveway. And if you can't see around the corner of the um, street, nobody else can. So we want to get these things trimmed back where we need to go and, and to the people that say, that, that don't want to deal with this stuff and then we'll have the ability to have a regulation and tell them to uh, trim things back. That's what it's about. Thank you. Jim Max Mosky, 12 North Water Drive, also Planning Board. The Planning Board did discuss this at our meetings. There, we're, we are in favor of this. The reason it's a general bylaw, not a zoning bylaw, is if it was a zoning bylaw, anybody that had something there today would be grandfathered. This does not grandfather anybody. But one question is, within 15 feet of a public street or curb, and the only question that we still have is, where does that line start? Is it the property line or is it the street? It's just not clear. Shell, if I could just ask Timmy if he could answer that question. We're not going to forget you, I promise. It is to the, from the edge of the uh, blacktop or the curb. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. I totally understand this for corners. I am not so clear on the um, validity of it on a, a long stretch of street. I think probably uh, at least a third of the trees in town will be out of compliance with this, and I'd hate to see us cut down our canopy. I, I hear from Mr. Nyhart that we are not going to be enforcing this willy-nilly. 
But I have to tell you, it makes me nervous. I put in, I think, five trees along my own property a couple of years ago that are not quite to three feet, but uh, my intention was that they would be eventually and that they will be to replace a 85-year-old maple tree that is not going to last through my children's lifetimes. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned here because trees are a good thing and yes, sight lines are a good thing too and I think there are ways to do them that are not in conflict and maybe the bylaw needs to talk about sight lines from driveways and corners and not just a general blanket 15 feet from the street or less. I believe Mr. Nyhart said that this is for line of sight. Line of sight and that would be if it's a hazard and he would come out there and check it out and see if there's any work to be done. No, no, right? you're no, no, you gonna. I have to come to the microphone, sir. So do you. Uh, but that's what Mr. Nyhart said specifically. All right. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I have a question about the um, penalties for violations. It mentions first, second, and third offense. Um, I'm wa wondering a couple things. First offense, do you get the fine right away, or do you get a warning at a certain period of time in which to rectify the situation? Is the second offense considered a new offense? Is it a new offense, or is it a case of not having addressed the issue of the first offense? I, it's unclear to me how this works. Also, when you're talking about first, second, and third offenses, is that over a long period of time? Do you reset the clock again at some point when somebody's had multiple offenses? Just a couple questions to clarify. You got the guy with the S on his shirt and back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things I need to point out, it is with regard to Shell's question, it's the obstruction, obstructing the view of a motorist. And it's very specific. You know, certainly if you're if there is a tree or a bush that's very close to the road and somebody cannot back out without being seen be, without being able to see up the road that's an obstruction for a view of a motorist okay hmm? it does and with regard to the fines it, um, this is the way we're legally supposed to put it but as we as 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 it is is Every, everything is discussed, you have a warning. You're giving some time to fix it. The first offense is if you don't fix it, if you don't follow the warning. That's the way the law reads. That's the way the fines work. Okay? So, unfortunately, that's the way we have to put it in. Your first offense is if you don't follow. And the second offense is if you don't follow again? Yes. Yes. Ken Jacobson, 12 Bristol Lane. I had the same problem with understanding exactly what this article was saying. I, I would kind of suggest that we put this one over uh, until Springtown meeting and rewrite it so it's a lot more clear. I, I totally trust our building commissioner, but 10 years from now, he may not be the building commissioner. And so I would rather have the article specify exactly what is supposed to go on rather than just have to remember what the building commissioner said on this night 10 years from now. Yeah, I totally agree with the last speaker and I would actually vol I mean, I do this for a living and I think it's poorly worded. I appreciate the intent. I would be willing to make a draft of clearer language, but not here tonight. It's going to take me probably 20 or 30 minutes to do that because it's, it's ambiguously worded right now. Ors and ands can be misinterpreted. Um, it could be read in probably four or five conflicting ways. So I think the issue is not with the intent, it's with the specific language here. And as I said, if Tim wants to work with me on a revision, I'm happy to do that, but can't do it tonight. Uh, therefore, I will make a motion to pass it over until spring. So you're not going to let me speak, huh? Is there a second to the motion? Second.
I will abide by that. Shall you get a chance, but it's going to be in a minute. Um, I disagree with the previous speaker. Uh, Mr. Nyhart went to an existing bylaw in another town. So we know this is legal and uh, this will work. It works other places, it will work here. Andrew Seraki, 176 Bay Road. Uh, my concern is uh, trimming back versus removal. Uh, I have an extensive arborvitae hedge, uh, 210 foot of frontage on uh, global arborvitaes. And uh, the town approached me a couple of years ago about cutting it back, uh, which I did so immediately, uh, to the point where uh, the bushes are now actually cut in half. And if I was to cut them back any further, the bushes would die. Uh, those bushes have been in place for over 20 years, prior to me even living there, by a professional landscaper from Hadley. Uh, I was under the impression that everything was fine. And uh, in, in relation to parking spaces, it's, it's, if it was okay to park someplace, today, tomorrow, they state, well, now you can't park there. I don't feel like that should fall on the, the homeowner. Uh, if, if, if they say it's okay, and then it's not okay, I've had bushes there for over 20 years, my concern is how come it's not okay now, and, and the cost impact that's going to have on uh, the residents. Uh, in, so, in some cases, it, it may be a trimming back. In other cases, it's going to be a full removal of a complete hedge uh, frontage of an entire home, which is something that I didn't plan for. Susan Moran, North Lane. Uh, this article is intended to address uh, current safety issues in town. And to the extent that if the article doesn't pass tonight, those safety issues go unaddressed, I would ask that this article pass. If it needs to be amended, uh, next town meeting it can be. It can be changed. But right now, if there's an issue in town, no one has the authority to ask a person to change something on their land that endangers their neighbors and endangers all motorists. And that's not right. It needs to be corrected. And I ask everyone here to pass the article. Paulette Gustava, 40 Knightley Road. Um, I have a couple questions on the wording on here, if someone could address it. Does this apply only to a corner lot, or does it in, uh, apply to the entire frontage of a driveway? And does this impact all vegetation within 15 feet of the road? Or is this just a corner lot and vegetation can only be three feet and for what distance? Those, that to me is not clear reading this. Tim, are you able to speak to that? Edwin Matusco, 116 Stockbridge Street. I, I'm trying to get my head around this and it seems very uh, subjective. Um, the way it's worded, any fence, hedge, shrub, or other growth. Well, some people plant corn pretty close to the road. So are you gonna, are you gonna make me or my neighbor cut down a corn field for because of the way this is written? It seems subject, uh, subjective because with some, some people. I think cell phones and texting is more dangerous than little shrubs in the, in the corners and you should pay more attention to what you're doing. And if there is a shrub or a, a hedge or other growth on the town right of way, then the town, doesn't the town have the authority to clear up the problem? And even if the even if the homeowner thinks, ah, I like that shrub, but it's not yours. It's on the town right of way. So if there is an issue, shouldn't the town be able to come in, rectify it if it's on town property? It doesn't really explain that here. Okay. 
as another farmer who plants corn as close to the road as you can, um, I think we have to go back to Mrs. Moran's point. We, have, we currently have a situation where we've approached someone about a line of sight issue. They've basically thrown it back in our face and said, with a lawyer, and God knows we give enough business to Mr. Bard's firm, we don't need to be drumming up anymore over a line of sight issue. But I think everybody, you know, if I plant corn too close to the road, somebody says, you know, I pull up to the stop sign and then I got 12 foot corn standing there, it's a problem. So you shave the corner off a little bit, or you at least use common sense. When you have, when you go to somebody and you say, you have something that's causing a line of sight issue, and their response is, with their lawyer, well, there's no bylaw. That puts Tim, the chief of police, uh, the DPW, in a very precarious position. What we're trying to do here is put a bylaw on the books, so if there is a line of sight issue, we at least have something to go to a person and say, we need to address this, we need to work it out, fix it. We don't have that right now. That's what we're trying to do here. In most cases, um, a lot of roads, uh, the right of way for the town is 15 feet. Not in all cases. In this one instance, we don't have the 15 foot right away on each side of the road. Um, I do, I have asked Shell uh, yeah, to rewrite it for the town. Um, this was done hurriedly uh, and we really didn't have a lot of time to uh, critique it. Uh, it was uh, done in haste and uh, we will ask for a rewrite and get it back to you. But I would hope that you can understand our position right now. We do have a major legal issue that we've got to deal with, and we will rewrite it. And I will certainly take his advice on how to rewrite it for next time. But I'd like to get this thing passed now. Thank you. Mr. Jacobson, the town attorney has some things that he'd like to make mention. Would it be okay if we went in front of you with those issues? Well, let me just make this one point, if you, if, with all of okay. Sure. So, I'm not at all quibbling with the need to have this ordinance. I'm sure we really need the ordinance. What I'm worried about is what our building inspector just said. It's a poorly drafted ordinance. And I can't see voting on this and making it an ordinance tonight just to have it rewritten at some point. I, I don't think that makes it an ordinance. Okay. So I think we have to table it till, till next spring when, and bring it back as, as something we can all understand. Attorney Bart. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, let me just explain. This was done in, in such haste in response to what was perceived to be a, a significant issue that we actually didn't have a chance to, to review it before it was dropped in. And I have a couple of thoughts here, because I, I do hear some urgency on the part of some people, so ultimately people will get a chance to vote yay or nay on this. But I would suggest two amendments that I think will clarify some of the issues of concern to people here tonight, and then you can decide whether or not to vote it now and fine tune it for the spring or, or not. The first types of concerns I'm hearing are people who are afraid that they're going to be asked to remove trees or limb trees even if they're not creating visibility issues. As uh, Brian West mentioned, if he's got a cornfield that is creating a visibility problem, he can shave it, but he may have other cornfields that really aren't creating visibility problems and therefore nobody's going to be asking him to uh, cut those back. So the, one of the phrases I'd like to add here makes, would make clear that this applies only in situations where the vegetation is hampering visibility. And so that's the phrase. If you look in the third line, well, so let's look in the middle of the second line where it says, any fence, hedge, or shrub, or other growth or enclosure wall, and then I would add hampering visibility. <laughs> So this only applies in an instance where the visibility is an issue. Uh, most, for most driveways, it's not an issue. And then secondly, 
if you go down to the next line, uh, this was another question that was raised. There's obviously some question about when it says 15 feet of a public street. Well, for those of you who are familiar with how streets lay out, there are many ways of, you know, the street doesn't end where the pavement ends. But I think for these purposes, uh, let me just fi finish that other thought. You have the pavement, and then the public right of way continues for some distance, and it, it depends entirely on the nature of the street, in some instances it might end exactly where the pavement ends, in other instances the street, in other words the right of way that the town owns, may extend another 25 feet into your front yard actually. Um, and that's a normal situation. So where it says, and situated within 15 feet of a public street, I would suggest stating, and situated within 15 feet of the paved portion of a public street. Again, the problem is when you have the pavement and then you immediately have a driveway, uh, then you're going to have a visibility issue as opposed to a situation where you have um, the paved portion of a way and then you've got, uh, this would be a more rural setting, where you've got some unpaved portion, dirt portion, and then the driveway. In that case, there's less likely to be visibility because there shouldn't be anything in that uh, unpaved portion that's still part of the public way. Um, and that that may vary with the situation. So uh, if somebody wants to make those as motions, if that's of interest, or I see at least one person who may want to tinker with the second one. Anyway, I throw that out as suggestions for trying to make the best of this bylaw for those people who are interested in voting on it tonight. I move the two amendments proposed by Attorney Bart. And motion and seconded. Okay. The motion is to move that the two changes that have been proposed by Attorney Bard, simple majority, all those in favor, please signify by raising your cards. This ain't going to cost us more, is it? Of course. <laughs> all those opposed? Motion passes. Any further discussion regarding the motion with the amendments? Um, Paulette Kuzdeba, 40 Knightley Road. I still have the question on, I don't know that my questions particularly, it, does this uh, apply to only corner lots or does this apply to the entire frontage? And if it only applies to corner lots, is the height of vegetation three feet for the entire lot or for a specific distance? If it doesn't say specific to corner lot. Th those are good questions. As I read it, it, it applies to more than a corner lot. Um, it does apply to driveways as well, even if you're not on a corner lot. Um, and I, again, I, I think the issue, the only measurement here is the, uh, it talks about situated 15 feet, now it says 15 feet from the paved portion of a public way. So I read it to state that it only applies to the 15 feet back from the pavement. The, the idea is, you know, if you've got trees 40 feet back, they're not going to uh, obstruct anybody's visibility getting in or off the street. So I read this to apply only to the last 15 feet so that you know you and your guests can see when you get on the road and more importantly the vehicles going by because presumably well for both both sides the vehicles going by can see the car as it emerges in those last 15 feet my concern is i have an older house in hadley my house is actually probably 20 feet from the pavement and if you start talking about removing vegetation within 15 feet of the pavement. Um, you could severely affect my property. Secondly, um, who is going to make the determination that it's hampering visibility? And what, do, what is that, what is the definition of hampering visibility? Because that is open to interpretation and we know if you're going to get attorneys involved, then that is going to be a point of contention. 
Right, and that's a good question as well. So all of, all of these bylaws have enforcing officials who have to make that judgment call, and so I, I think our building inspector would be the person who makes the judgment call. And you know, it's my experience, we see a lot of litigation, and we don't litigate very close calls. In other words, you know, you, you see it when you know it sort of thing. And uh, so if the vegetation is on a part of the lot where it's not next to the driveway and not obscuring the car, I mean, the point is you don't want a high hedge so that when a car comes out of a driveway, it's a surprise to everybody. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not a question evidently that's arisen frequently in town, but there does happen to be at least one of those questions now. Yeah, the, the intent is, again, line of sight for a vehicle. It's not going to be 50, that you have to clear everything out on your front yard for the entire width, frontage of your yard. It's making sure that anybody that goes into your driveway can leave safely. So it's a line of sight issue, and it's basically what that's... We're not going to put in a huge definition of what line of sight is. It's basically, can you see up the road or not? It's not going to be that you're going to take out every single tree up and down your frontage, or that we're going to go and tell Mr. West to take out every single corn stalk that he has up near the road. If somebody comes up near the uh, corner of his lot and they can't see up the road at all, we get the calls. Of course, with Mr. West, He's, uh, he's always uh, making sure that he has everything back far enough. But there has been instances, then you, and we all know them. We, we can name them right now of, of several places that we have some shrubs and bushes that are hanging over the street right now. And that's a problem for anybody that's pulling out of those driveways at those houses. Any further discussion? Ray Spazeski, 32 Hockenham Road. Uh, I just want to know how this applies to unpaved roads. Yeah. Moody Bridge Road, or uh, I think the end of Shattuck. Well, that's a good point. Uh, we could add where it said the paved portion of, could say the paved portion uh, of a public street or the traveled way, gets a little vaguer, but the traveled way of a um, unpaved public street. Further discussion? I'll be moved. Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your cards. All those opposed? Nine against. Motion passes.